my recent adventures have put a lot of strain on the car battery. I'm using the lights more, I'm charging my cameras and other devices, and sometimes I'm parked in the same spot without running the engine for several days. Also, I recently purchased a dash cam for my car, and randomly, this was the turning point, the moment that I decided I need more power. Now, one option is to get a power pack for the dash cam, but I figured if I'm going to bother wiring in another power pack, I might as well just wire in a proper leisure battery, and then I can power a lot more toys as well. And this then led me to thinking, well, if I'm going to wire in a leisure battery, then I should also get a solar panel, and then I can keep both batteries topped up even when I'm not running the engine. Also, I thought if I'm going to be pulling down the headlining of the car, running wiring into the engine bay and drilling loads of holes in the bodywork, then I might as well do all the electrics in one go. So what ensued was a several month project to gradually rip apart my car and take it through what has been its most significant modification yet. I've got to say, it's quite daunting when you get the car to a stage where the headlining's down, you've got all the interior panels removed, I've got holes drilled in the roof, um, and I don't really know what I'm doing. Now, fitting the leisure battery is a bit of a risk. Decent leisure batteries are actually quite big, and discoveries aren't renowned for having loads of spare space just to put a battery. Am I going to have to lose one of my seats to fit the battery? I really hope not. Even if there was lots of room, would I not just be better off with a power pack? I've watched several other travel videos and the Jackery power packs seem really popular. And one huge advantage, they don't require any install or setup whatsoever. You just put the power pack in the back of the car and off you go. So is this Ledger battery a huge mistake? Will it even fit in the Discovery without being in the way? And should I have just bought a Jackery? Well, let's find out. Okay, so we somehow have to figure out how to get all of this into the back of the Discovery. So I'm thinking, when you look behind here, there's actually quite a lot of space that's around the wheel arch. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and remove all of this plastic unit and see if we can fit the battery and a few other pieces inside there. Apparently this plastic, the trim and the headlinings can snap if it's too cold and it is quite a cold day today. So I've had this running for about 40 minutes just to keep the inside of the car nice and warm. Hopefully that will make all the plastic trim a little bit more pliable. We're going to recycle this piece of foam. Okay, so to support the wooden platform that's going to be going along the bottom there, this is what the battery is going to sit on. So we've just taken out the 6 mil bolt that was in there and put the threaded bar with a couple of nuts and a washer on there to act as like a platform and the, the plywood will sit on that. We've managed to attach a bracket onto here which will also support the floor and then the rest of the wood will come across. We can screw it down with these two points which was holding the big black bracket in uh, previously.
Okay, this is the bottom panel which will create the floor for the battery to sit on. This is the panel that goes against the very back of the car. We've designed the bracket so that this panel will sit about a centimetre away from the actual bodywork. This is the wood panel which will go just slightly in front of the back panel and this is going to take the inverter. Apparently for these bits of iron filings on the metal it can cause rust really quick. Um, so anyway, I've tried to clean that up as best as I can. Okay, the next thing that I need to adapt is, I was hoping that I'd get away with a switch panel with only eight switches on it, but um, there's so many variations with all these light bars that actually I'm gonna need two of these switch panels, um, which means um, I need to create some space in here to fit both switch panels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this uh, solar charge controller, hopefully just underneath the inverter here, um, and then that will free up more space here, and I should just about be able to fit two of those switch panels in place against that uh, back panel. I'm gonna let the electrician wire these up um, and that's mainly because there may be three or four different lights running into the same fuse, which means they might need to be individually fused as well. And I don't know the answer to that, so. They're gonna need these uh, little blocks um, against the backboard just to hold it slightly off the back because these cables have to be fed through from the back and therefore they need a bit of space behind. So I need to know where to position these and where to position these. So unfortunately, I'm struggling to get the hole drilled for this one so that I can put the lower screw in because this metal bracket is in the way. So the majority of the cables now that are running from the light bars, the solar panel, the dash cam, they're all coming through this point, through this pillar um, at the back of the car. And I just want to keep them out of the way of the seat belt. So I've taped them to this here and I've also just tie wrapped the cables as a bunch to this D-ring in the corner, which is quite convenient. And now that just means that nothing's actually touching this, um, this seat belt when it moves up and down. So now that I've put all of the cables down this rear corner pillar, um, this plastic trim isn't popping back into place properly. Um, it does on the other side, which suggests it's the cables themselves that are getting in the way. Um, I've tried wherever possible to move the cables to one side, but um, it's still not popping into place. And I think it's because of these fins that are clearly offering some kind of um, strength and support to the plastic trim. So I'm gonna try and just cut these down and provide a little bit more space for the cables to sit between the uh, fir tree plastic connectors. I've already broken one there trying to put it in, so hopefully that doesn't affect it too much. Okay, well, it's not pretty, but I don't think it has to be because it's on the inside um, and it's still looking fairly decent on the other side. My main concern was I didn't leave any sharp edges behind that could potentially rub against or catch or cut into the wires. So hopefully that'll be good enough. Yeah, let's see if it fits. So there's something that just keeps popping it off at the top and I can't see any of the cables actually restricting this at all. So I don't know why. It's not playing. Yeah. 
just does not want to stay in place at the top. That fir tree clip is now completely destroyed. So I think actually the main problem is this fin here between the fir tree clips because the cables are trying to fit between that gap and obviously they can't really with that fin in the way. So I've removed all these, probably didn't need to. I think that's the main culprit, but I'll get rid of that now and see if that makes it easier to clip into place. Okay, so I think removing that top fin has actually really helped. Uh, it seems a lot more willing to go into position now. Only problem is, I've broken all of the fir tree clips. So I'll pick some more up when the shop's open tomorrow and hopefully it will work this time. So the car is back from the auto electricians and first of all, did not realize just how much extra wiring and accessories he's had to squeeze into that tiny space. So I definitely didn't make this easy for him. I'm not quite sure why he's kept all of this excess cable bunched up like this. I gave him plenty of length on the wires in case he wanted to move the components around, but I assumed he'd just cut that down to size once he'd got everything where he wanted it to be. Anyway, this charger is taking power from the solar panel and it's charging both the leisure battery and the main car battery, so that's good. It means I never have to worry about my battery going flat if I'm parked for a few days. The switch fuse assemblies are running all the different combinations of the lights but I've got two spare switches in case I fit any additional uh, accessories in the future, such as a winch. If you're wondering how this leisure battery is connected to my main car battery, um, underneath this wooden panel is a plastic cover that goes underneath the wheel arch. So he's fed the cable through there and along underneath my car and into the engine bay. So this leisure battery is secured just by these two pieces of angle iron here and the bracket arm just feeds into those slots. Now the battery is protruding more than I expected, which is probably gonna make it a bit harder to cover up. But the good news is uh, it still doesn't interfere with the rear seats. So I haven't had to compromise at all really on cargo or sleeping space. Now the problem with this battery protruding is that I can't secure the seat belt back into its mount. And to be honest, I don't think that a bundle of excess wires is helping particularly because it means I can't push the battery and maneuver it further to the left and get it round some of those other fuse accessories and components at the back. Now, I'm not going into detail in this video about the dash cam, but there's also an issue with the way he's wired that. So I'm not totally convinced he's done this in the best way possible. Just with that excess wiring, the fact that the battery's protruding and the dash cam, I think I'm gonna need a second opinion. The guys at Avenger 4x4 have taken another look at this for me and just given an opinion on the work I had done and moved things around a little bit. Um, and they actually had some really good advice. But more importantly, they've managed to rearrange everything so that this battery now sits a lot further back. It's nice and flush with the floor panel. And you can see they've even managed to get that seatbelt bracket back in place. Um, so this is a much tidier job. So they've added a bit of wood to the wooden panel that I put in place here behind the inverter so that the inverter can be pushed higher up into the car. And that's allowed them to put all these other fuse accessories in this space here, which means the battery can be pushed a lot further back. Behind the battery, you can see he's kept things roughly as they were, uh, but he's just removed some of those accessories that were pushing the battery forward a little bit and, uh, and causing all the wires to bunch up. He's moved the solar charge controller from underneath the inverter over to the left here um, and attached that directly into the bodywork. The big bunch of wires that the previous electrician had left here down the side hasn't actually been removed but it's been placed further back right in the corner there uh, basically behind the rear lights of the car so they weren't particularly concerned about that they just found a better place to hide it so it didn't get in the way of the battery. The other thing that they did was they moved the parking aid module just further back and they've attached that to the bodywork of the car on another secure fitting. It's nice and secure, it's not rattling around, but it just freed up loads more space in here for the inverter and all those accessories. Um, so that's really helped. Um, you can see that we can still get to this plug socket here. So that's still accessible. He's had to cut a little bit more of the plastic out, but that's fine. So now it's ready for me to find a way of covering this up.
notice on here that uh, the switch also has a terminal for an earth and this earth is necessary if you want the little light to shine on the switch the problem is as soon as you earth the switch it makes the inverter on all the time no matter what the switch position is in so i'm gonna have to leave the earth which means i'm gonna have to do without the light being on but it's still a reasonable little marker to know which way is on and which way is off so it's fine as it is so that switch is now wired into the little remote receiver unit there and if i turn this on the little rocker switch there so that's now turned on but you can see the green light hasn't come on and that's because the switch is now off and if i hit the switch on as you can see the light hasn't come on because we've not earthed it but the green light is now on to say that the inverter's on so off on working and i've also tested that because i've got the extension lead plugged in here i don't think i'd ever have actual four sockets running off this one inverter but just to prove i've got the light on at the side there if i turn the switch off that goes too back box for the sockets I've gone for the plasterboard version because these clips will push forward and hopefully press against the carpet and the wood panel and hold it in place so that should be nice and easy back of this uh, plug socket I've literally just wired in a single plug and um, these come with a 13 amp fuse anyway so if there's any um, excess load coming from the inverter and um, the wire is protected by the fuse that's in the plug so I can't really see there being too much danger to me uh, setting this system up in the way that I have if you think that there is anything massively dangerous in the way that I've done this then please do comment because I'd be really interested to know So am I glad that I fit the leisure battery instead of getting a power pack? Well I'm definitely glad that I did fit the leisure battery because now I have a plug socket which is really handy for things like the laptop and other devices where a USB cable just won't do it. I have work lights all around the car and because those work lights are wired directly into the leisure battery they'll keep going for several hours without the need to start the engine or recharge the battery. I also have a power socket running to the outside of the vehicle and that's going to be really handy for things like LED lights and even for the diesel heater that I plan to use in the colder months. One of the most important things is the dash cam. Now I can leave the car park for several days and know that the dash cam will keep working without draining down the battery. And finally, I've got the solar panel, which is keeping both the leisure battery and the main battery topped up all the time. Now I know you can get a lot of those features with a power pack, and it is a lot of effort wiring a leisure battery into a car like this. So I can still totally see why people will just go for the power pack. It's a lot more convenient. You're not making any drastic changes to your car. And there are also added benefits to the power pack, such as you can actually move it around and it's not tied to the vehicle all the time. So even I'm not ruling out getting a Jackery or a similar power pack in the future. But for now, I'm really happy with this setup. It's all integrated into the car. I haven't had to compromise on space. And I have that extra peace of mind that the main battery is being topped up by the leisure battery and by the solar panel. In the next video, we're going to look at the strand work lights and light bars.
We'll see how easy they are to fit. And we'll also look at the quality and the many functions of these lights. So I'll see you there.